Then on Tuesday, NASA made their big announcement. The much-anticipated worldwide release of the James Webb Space Telescope's first scientific images and data. Uh, because JWST operates primarily in the infrared, up to about the color orange, much of what it sees is outside the visual spectrum of, that human eyes can perceive. So in order for us to see what Webb sees, they have to shift the color spectrum up into the visual, visual range. Uh, the result is spectacular. So this, what we are seeing here, is Webb's first deep field image. Uh, this image was captured with just 12 hours of exposure versus the Hubble telescope's two weeks of exposure for a far inferior image of the same region. And so what we're seeing here are, if we can zoom in, um, foreground stars, which are these bright points with the lens flare on them, or the hexagonal uh, uh, starburst on them. Uh, a lot of di more distant stars, and galaxies galore. We see uh, uh, galaxies that appear to be warped due to gravitational lensing um, all over the place especially right around this area. So if you're not familiar, uh, which would be um, surprising, but if you, are, if you are, by chance, not familiar with gravitational lensing, it's a, an effect that was predicted um, by Einstein and then demonstrated years later. But um, uh, what, what happens is when there is a gravitational, a strong gravitational field, uh, out there in space, such as a, a large star, or a galaxy, or even a galactic cluster. Um, uh, the, the gravity actually takes the light from behind it, from our perspective, warps that light around the galaxy, ar ar around the gravitational center, and then projects that light in a circle around uh, the gravitational source. So what we're seeing here around the periphery of this sort of in this, um, you know, this kind of circle, you can imaginary circle you can draw is the projection of more distant galaxies um, uh, you know, in a, in a virtual space around the, the gravitational center. It's a very strange concept to wrap your head around and the mathematics of it are far beyond my capacity to to understand but uh, but nonetheless it is a real um, gravitational effect it's not an optical effect it's a gravitational effect on the uh, the photons but uh, in any case it lets us see uh, even farther than we normally would be able to because the images of the distant galaxies are um, basically blown up they're enhanced and uh, and I think, it, unless I'm getting the wrong ones here, I think that these two on the left are actually the same galaxy. Like these two uh, arc smudges are multiple projections of the same galaxy. I know that, that one, of these, one of these was um, uh, listed as, or was determined to be uh, multiple projections of the same object. And if we look in the very far distance, these fuzzy red things, such as this right here, are the most distant objects that uh, we have ever seen, that our species has ever seen. This, uh, as an example, this red smudge here is an example of um, a galaxy up to about 13.1 billion light years away, which is uh, approaching the limit of what uh, James, met, James Webb is able to see. Now, this particular shot kind of reminds me of the uh, pale blue dot image taken by the Voyager spacecraft of um, the Earth, which occupied uh, a portion of a pixel uh, trapped in a sunbeam from the, the glare from the sun. So this here is a glare from this uh, nearby or closer bright star. Now, if my understanding is correct, this field of view 
uh, is equivalent to if you were to hold a grain of sand at arm's length. Uh, that is the area of sky that we're looking at right here. So just absolutely incredible. Moving on to the next image. Here we have um, some scientific data rather than a photograph, but this is data uh, gathered of the um, th by doing spectroscopic analysis of uh, the light of a distant star passing through uh, one of its planets, WASP 96b, exhibiting the telltale signs of uh, water, H2O, in that planet's atmosphere. And so we see here the best fit model, which is, uh, according to my understanding, what they were expecting to find in terms of the, the signature of, of uh, the spectral signature of water molecules in the atmosphere. And uh, these data points, and I presume that the, the candlesticks, uh, the up and down lines represent margins of error, perhaps. But uh, the candlesticks, which follow right along their best fit model, are uh, indicative that there is definitely water in this planet's atmosphere. Now, I believe this is, um, I believe, if I recall correctly, that this planet is a large, larger than Earth, maybe two times the, the mass of Earth. But, um, but yeah, very cool, very cool stuff. The third photo they released was the Southern Ring Nebula. So these, this target is visible from the Southern Hemisphere, and so we wouldn't necessarily be that familiar with it here in the Northern Hemisphere. But um, I queued up the full-sized image, so we should be able to zoom in a lot. And so at the center we have, uh, this, is a, this is a planetary nebula, so this is a a star that uh, basically ran out of hydrogen and started um, uh, fusing helium and it basically sloughed off this isn't a supernova this is this is a, a result of a a basically it uh, its gravity um, uh, its mass was reduced to the point where it could no longer hold onto its atmosphere, and so it threw off uh, its outer atmosphere, which is the, the nebula that we see. And what remains is a white dwarf, which is what we expect to happen with our own sun in, in um, uh, you know, a billion or a few billion years. And so, let's see how far, let's, let's zoom at 100%. So this is at 100%. If I zoom in any farther, it'll just be artifacts. Some absolutely stunning images. And there is a scientific explanation for why this center is blue and why the... Uh, um, it gets progressively more red as you move outward from the center. I don't have that information um, <laughs> on the tip of my tongue, but uh, uh, I believe it has to do with the um, degree to which the atoms are being excited by radiation. And because there is going to be more, uh, they are going to be more irradiated toward the center, they emit uh, photons in a different part of the spectrum in a higher uh, frequency um, range of the electromagnetic spectrum. Moving on to the next image, the, th the fourth image that NASA released. This is called Stefan's Quintet. And so we have one, two, three, and then four, five uh, galaxies all interacting here. I believe this is also in the visible from the southern hemisphere. This is like screenshot central. I mean, um, 
wallpaper central. Okay, so let's zoom into 100%. So over here, this um, uh, galaxy, we actually see the individual points of thousands of stars here, which is uh, incredible. This must be in the foreground, is, is what I would say, because um, if it were further distance, if it were further distant, rather, then we would not be seeing these indiv individual points of, of light. But, uh, uh, and then up here we have this grand spiral with some really interesting um, arm, like galactic arm activity going on, almost like um, the, the arms are broken. So we see sort of a, a grand sweep of, of white galactic arm on the top and the bottom, but then sort of this nebulous stuff in between is just chaotic. And down here we have this pair of galaxies which are merging in a very dramatic fashion. And finally, the fifth photo, and um, by far the most colorful. This is this is called Cosmic Cliffs. This is a detail shot from from within the Carina Nebula. And this image is actually, if I recall correctly, about fourteen thousand pixels wide. If you download the full the full version. And so, if we zoom in here to a hundred percent. We can see and they call them cosmic cliffs because there's such a sharp edge between the uh, the reddish orange portion of the nebula and the bluish uh, portion up above here. And so the reason why there is such a sharp edge is because this material, this reddish orange um, I mean, the material itself isn't reddish orange, but those are the, the that's the wavelength of the photons that are being released by uh, being blasted with radiation. So the re the the reason why there is a sharp edge is because um, this is basically um, being com the, the, that edge is being compressed by radiation pressure from the the source of the the nebula like you know so this is a planetary nebula i believe and the radiation pressure from that uh star at the center is pushing the material up against uh uh you know each other in such a way that we have these sharp and amazing lines of um you know nebula like orange nebula versus blue wispy material but absolutely fantastic now this this uh, celestial object has been certainly been photographed before uh, but at much less quality like much lesser quality Hubble has seen you know has photographed this ground-based telescopes have photographed this but never in any kind of detail like we're seeing here um, this is just fantastic Okay, so NASA published not only the images that we just saw, but also uh, some further analysis of those images to their Flickr page. If you, uh, what's it called? Uh, NASA Web Telescope, I think, is the Flickr page. And uh, I can show you those here. So this here is another view of the Carina Nebula, those cosmic cliffs. Uh, this is a combined view from Webb's near cam and Miri in the near infrared. So looking at a slightly different uh, color frequency range, and where it, we're able to see sort of through the dust and and through the material material to um, to the stars beyond. And that's one of the great 
benefits of viewing in the infrared range of the electromagnetic spectrum is that we're able to cut through a lot of that dust to see what's beyond, which is why web will be an invaluable tool in looking at our, galact our own galactic center because, uh, of course, uh, the center of the Milky Way is on the other side of um, 20,000 light years of, of, of uh, dust and gas. And here we have another view of Stefan's Quintet, taken by Webb's Miri instrument. And so you see a lot of the sort of aesthetic uh, qualities, the, like the aesthetic uh, coloration is gone, but here we're able to kind of peer through some of those colors into what lies beyond. And so do you remember those, those broken arms I was talking about earlier that looked like nebula in the uh, upper central galaxy here. Uh, we can see those in kind of in a, a bluish white color. And finally, uh, the Southern Ring Nebula. On the left is near cam in the near infrared. That's NIR cam. And on the right is MIRI, M-I-R-I, in the, in the mid infrared, which is a, a lower frequency a longer wavelength of light. And we can see there in the center the binary stars at the heart of that nebula.